Hello and welcome back to WWE 2K20 Universe Mode and we are here on Smackdown kicking off with the Universal Champion out here to say something to all of his competitors here on Smackdown after what happened at the Elimination Chamber Tommaso Ciampa managed to pin each and every man in that Elimination Chamber match and well it wasn't necessarily the cleanest way of doing things he managed to hide away from everyone and then steal the opportunities when they came up to be able to pin people but you cannot deny he managed to pin every single person in that elimination chamber match who is next for Tommaso Ciampa who is next for the universal championship let's hear what Tommaso Ciampa has to say here tonight but wait a second Ciampa seeing something oh my goodness Finn Balor Finn Balor the Royal Rumble winner is he coming to SmackDown here tonight? Tommaso Ciampa coming out here to say some words to the competitors on SmackDown. But instead, greeted by the man from Monday Night Raw, Finn Balor, the Royal Rumble winner. Coming out here to confront Tommaso Ciampa here tonight before Ciampa can even get a word out in Edgeways. Is this what we've been waiting for? Is this the moment where Finn Balor is going to make his decision? Or is he doing what he's been doing with Sheamus? With Sheamus, he has been playing with the WWE Champion. May Finn Balor taking this opportunity to play with the Universal Champion as well. But what has Finn Balor got to say to Tommaso Ciampa here tonight? What is he going to say? I'm next. What, wait a second. Finn Balor. Finn Balor making his decision and now attacking Tommaso Ciampa. Finn Balor has chosen the Universal Champion and the Sling Blade to Ciampa. Taking him down, Sling Blade. And now Ciampa rolling down to the outside. Finn Balor looking to taunt him, but Ciampa catching Finn Balor. Kick to the arm of Balor. And Ciampa now getting some damage to the Royal Rumble winner. His WrestleMania opponents, he slams him down into the mat. These two men brawling, giving a taste of what it's going to be like at WrestleMania. But Finn Balor now getting Ciampa up on his shoulders and taking him down. Knee to the face. And Balor up top, up top to the top rope. Could we see this at WrestleMania? A huge elbow drop from Balor. And Balor looks down at Ciampa. Ciampa down on his legs and we've got it confirmed. Universal Championship at WrestleMania. Balor, Ciampa. Wow, what a start to the night. The Royal Rumble winner has made his decision and he will be facing Tommaso Ciampa, the Universal Champion at WrestleMania. What is sure to be a hell of a contest between those two men. We've been waiting for the answer for a long time and Finn Balor has made his decision choosing the Universal Champion, Tommaso Ciampa. But we do have a Women's Tag Team Championship match here to kick things off here tonight. Nia Jax and Dakota Kai taking on the number one contenders, the Riot Squad. Of course, Nia and Dakota haven't really been seen too much on SmackDown in recent weeks, not defending their championships. After Dakota Kai and Nia Jax have kind of, well, gone on slightly worse terms than they used to be, let's be honest, ever since what happened uh, with the uh, Royal Rumble and TLC, Dakota Kai and Nia Jax struggling to stay on the same page as women's tag team champions but they still are your tag team champions and they have been very dominant force as the women's tag team champions can they stay on the same page tonight as they defend against Ruby Riot and Sarah L and apologies Liv Morgan of the Riot squad here tonight yes those women's tag team championships on the line here tonight and a bit of a consolation prize for Dakota Kai after failing to be able to get her hands on the SmackDown Women's Championship. Of course, she came very close to getting that championship at the Royal Rumble. But if she had been there at TLC, she might well be where Asuka is today. Of course, Asuka only got that opportunity against the former champion at TLC because of the fact that, well... Dakota Kai was supposed to get that match because she'd managed to pin Sasha Banks before, but Dakota Kai taken out of it because Nia Jax, behind Dakota Kai's back, decided to get them a rematch for the Women's Tag Team Championships, which of course they ended up winning. So they ended up with championship gold around their waist, but if Dakota Kai had managed to be in the same position Asuka was in that night, 
If you look at what Asuka is now, she is heading to a main event of WrestleMania to go and take on Ronda Rousey. And to go to Kurt, well, she's, she's a women's tag team champion. That's still great, but it's not exactly the same. So the tension between Dakota and Nia started building from there. Hopefully they've managed to get themselves back on the same page for tonight's match against the Riot Squad. Good tag team work there from Nia and Kai. Current women's tag team champions managing to work together well at the beginning of this match. And now the big power bomb from Nia Jax. Just debilitating Liv Morgan. Taking her down, slamming her into the mat in the middle of the ring. And Nia continuing to work over Liv, but Liv using her speed and size to be able to duck underneath the arm and now taking her down with a huge Hurricane Rana. Wow, huge Hurricane Rana. Definitely the way to go, using Nia Jax's own weight and strength against her. Now Liv rolling through, legs around the head, aeroplane spin, taking down Nia Jax again. Liv Morgan managing to get herself back into this match. Definitely the underdogs, the Riot Squad going into this one, but somehow Liv Morgan is managing to do this for the Riot Squad. Huge DDT to Nia Jax and Nia desperately crawling over to the Kota Kai, managing to get the tag for Ruby Riot, the fresh woman, into the match as well. But Kai catching her straight away with a leg to the face and now kicks to the face. Of course, Dakota Kai, the leader of Team Kick, she definitely knows what she's doing with those legs. She's going to kick someone's head off eventually. If she isn't too careful with those legs. And now look. The series of kicks to the chest of Ruby Riot. She tries to fight back. Ending up with a big scorpion kick to the face. And in our main event this evening. We will be seeing Seth Rollins. The Intercontinental Champion. He will be going up against Kylo Riley, A member of the Undisputed Era. After of course Adam Cole is the number one contender. For the Intercontinental Championship. So Seth Rollins taking on a different member of the UE here tonight, taking on Kyle O'Reilly to see who is the top dog here tonight. Very nice from Dakota Kai now moving up to that top rope. Ruby Wright desperately probably needs to get that tag to Liv Morgan. Kai has been very dominant since managing to get back in, laying in those kicks to Ruby. Ruby in a bad way right now, needs that tag. But Dakota Kai managing to knock Liv Morgan off the apron. Trying to keep her as far away as possible. But Liv straight back to her feet. The pinfall from Kai only getting a one count though on Ruby Riot. Leaving it too long perhaps to go for that pinfall attempt. And now Kai throwing Riot into the corner. Looking for that big boot. Yes she is. She gets the largest amount of space and runs up. Big boot to the side of the face of Ruby Riot. And Riot in a very bad position right now. Desperately needs that tag to Liv Morgan as Kai goes to the pin for one, two. Oh, so close. 2.99 there. Ruby Riot just managing to kick out on instinct at the very last second. The Riot Squad refusing to give up so easily in this one. And now into the corner goes Ruby. Dakota going for that tag to Nia Jax instead of finishing this herself. Going for that tag. And the dueling super kicks as Ruby Riot. Crawls over to the corner, gets the tag to Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan, Nia Jax was straight away. Tilt around the world, backbreaker. And a big senton in the middle of the ring from Nia Jax. And going for it again. Just looking to crush Liv Morgan in the middle of the ring right now. But Liv refusing, fighting back. Kick to the gut of Nia Jax. But Nia fighting back, using her strength advantage in a DDT of her own. Taking down Liv Morgan. But there's no Ruby Riot for Liv Morgan to tag to right now. Ruby down on the outside off the damage she took earlier in this match. And Nia, we don't see this often, going to the top row, going high risk, dropping the knee over the neck of Liv Morgan. And going for the pinfall, foot on the chest, one, two. But Liv, Liv managing to get out of it, but Nia Jack straight away back on offense, kick to the back of Liv Morgan. Getting Liv up to her feet. Nia Jax slamming her down into the mat and looking for that big leg drop over the throat again. We all surely dropped the knee over the throat of Liv Morgan. Now a big leg drop. And Nia Jax isn't stopping her there. Getting her up in position for the huge Samoan drop. And now is she going to go for that pinfall? Is she going to do what she normally does? Yes, she does. Getting the tag into the Kotakai. We know this is probably going to be it. This is going to be it for these guys here tonight. 
is how they win all of their matches. We get this big Samoan drop and then Dakota Kai comes in, finishing things off with the chiropractor to Liv Morgan. And one, two, three, and still your women's tag team champions, Dakota Kai and Nia Jax. Big victory here tonight for the women's tag team champions, managing to hold on to the gold here tonight. You've got to say, as much as they've had tensions before, they've managed to be on the same page here tonight. They managed to stay completely as a team, doing what they usually do, getting that tag team finish, putting away the Riot squad. And it's another successful defense for the, the, the best women's tag teams in WWE here today. But wait a second. Sasha, Bailey making their return. Making their return after the attacks from Nia Jax and Dakota Kai weeks ago. Making their return, taking down Nia Jax and Dakota Kai. Oh my goodness, the boss and hug connection. Making their return here tonight. We move on now to our next match with Rey Mysterio. This is a match of the high flyers, this one. Rey Mysterio has been challenged by the modern day high flyer, Ricochet. He wants to prove that he is the best high flyer of all time and you know the best way to do that is to take on a living legend, take on Rey Mysterio here tonight and Mysterio, he has accepted the challenge and he will be going up against Ricochet here tonight. But of course, Sasha Banks and Bayley returning at the end of that Women's Tag Team Championship match. Setting their sights clearly on the Women's Tag Team Champions, Dakota Kai and Nia Jax. It'll be interesting to see if Sasha Banks and Bayley can manage to take away those tag team straps from the waists of Nia Jax and Dakota Kai, the most dominant Women's Tag Team here in Universe Mode. But Ricochet here, a man who has had his own success in the tag division. Of course, a former SmackDown Tag Team Champion. And since then, managing to split away from Mustafa Ali, respectfully, of course. They're still good friends, just focusing on their singles careers right now. And Ricochet, looking to get himself higher up the card. And he's been having some big wins in recent weeks. And now up to the top rope goes Ricochet, looking for something high risk. Look at that! Oh my goodness! So many just twists and flips in that one. But Rey Mysterio, he is not giving up easily against Ricochet here tonight. Pulling him down, trying to make Ricochet submit. But Ricochet rolling out, using the springboard uppercut to Rey Mysterio. And also you got to think, Rey Mysterio, such a small opponent. It's very difficult to hit a springboard uppercut onto someone like Rey Mysterio. It's not like you have a tall target to hit. And then the shooting star press from the top rope. And wait a second, Ricochet. Ricochet and Mysterio on top. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Beautiful moves from these two men. Two men really going at it to try and prove who is the best high flyer of today. And Ricochet over the top rope to the outside. But Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio catching Ricochet into the ropes. Looking for the 619. And he hits it. Planting Ricochet down to the map, but instead of finishing it off, not going for the splash, going for the pin for one. But Ricochet managing to kick out, staying alive here tonight and up. And the big roundhouse kick to Rey Mysterio. Ricochet now up to the top rope, perhaps looking for that 6.30 sent on. And here we go, landing it. But Rey Mysterio gets the knees up, he gets the knees up. Ricochet spent too long on the top rope. But it all comes down to this, the recoil. Instead of it being a high flying move to put away, never mind. I thought he was going to go for the pinfall there on the recoil, but instead going up top, 6.30 sent on. And that's got to be at the recoil into the 6.30. One, two, three. And what a huge, huge victory tonight for Ricochet, putting away a living legend, one of the greatest high flyers of all time. Ricochet firmly trying to place himself up there as one of the greatest of all time but he's gonna have to get a few more wins first before he can really get himself up into that main event picture but a big victory tonight here for ricochet and there are definitely bright things in this man's future and now bobby lashley continuing 
his weekly challenges. Bobby Lashley again, challenging anyone. As long as they're big, that's all he cares about. He wants to face a big competitor, a huge competitor. And that's a very fair enough thing to say. He wants to, he wants to prove himself here tonight as he looks forward to his challenge, which he has laid out for Fastlane against Goldberg. So I don't know whether Goldberg is going to be answering that challenge. I haven't heard a specific response from Goldberg, but the challenge has been firmly laid down by the Almighty. And tonight the challenge has been answered by the biggest athlete in the locker room, the Big Show himself. Well, the Big Show not necessarily got the best win-loss record here in Universe Mode at the moment being, but this is going to be a big challenge for Bobby Lashley here tonight. He will, he'll want to submit the Big Show, and that's... Is he really going to be able to lock in the Hurt Lock? Like, it's not going to be an easy... It's not going to be easy for Bobby Lashley to lock in that Hurt Lock on someone as big as the Big Show. He needs to be able to close his hands. He needs to be able to finish the lock, and I don't know whether he's got the arm reach to be able to fully get around the Big Show to be able to lock in that Hurt Lock fully. And Bobby Lashley from behind. Dropping Big Show before Big Show was even ready. Another bell ringing, but the toll has already been done to the Big Show with that attack by Bobby Lashley for the bell at the even rung, knocking Big Show off his feet straight away. And realistically, that probably would have been the hardest thing for Lashley to do. Would have been to get that advantage. Would have been to take Big Show off his feet as easily as that. And instead, Lashley... Managing to jump Big Show from behind and getting that straight away. But Big Show now just throwing Bobby Lashley over his head. Using Lashley's momentum against him. And now Big Show back in the driver's seat for the first time in this match. Looking to be able to get the win over Lashley. But Lashley throwing Big Show over the top rope. Taking a lesson from Show there. Using Show's momentum against him as he goes over the top rope. And now Lashley... Oh my goodness, German suplex on the outside to the Big Show and Lashley showing off his strength right there. Showing off his strength to the crowd. Unbelievable and then tries to go for the running clothesline but Big Show ignores it. Big Show tries to return the favour and Lashley catches him, slams him down into the mat and look at that. Just throwing Big Show like he is nothing. That is the world's largest athlete. You cannot do that to someone like the Big Show. You cannot just throw him around the ring like that. And Lashley taking off the announce table. We saw last week he put Corbin through the announce table and over the head goes Big Show. Oh my goodness. Lashley is just a superman. You cannot deny it. You cannot deny this ungodly strength that Bobby Lashley has. And like I was saying, Lashley last week put Corbin through that announce table. Well, it looks like he wants to do the same thing tonight to show as show the Rose Lashley over the top rope. Big tries to go for that WMD for a second. But Lashley manages to reverse it, catching show and now throwing show over the top rope himself. Lashley getting show up to his feet and trying to lift him up. But this time, the big show ready for it. Ready to reverse Lashley. These two men desperately, show desperately not wanting to go through that announce table. He sees it right there behind him. He doesn't want to be going through it. That's not good. So this is for a man of show's age. He doesn't want to be put through an announce table by Bobby Lashley. And here we go again. Deja vu from last week. Oh my goodness. Through the table goes show. And Lashley shouting in the face of Big Show. Telling him that's what I do. I'm the world's strongest athlete. And you cannot deny it. Bobby Lashley, the almighty. You gotta think, can Goldberg be the man to end this 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 streak of dominance from Bobby Lashley? Because the reason Lashley wants this match with Goldberg is because Goldberg was the man who eliminated Lashley from the Royal Rumble. And Lashley, after missing out in the Elimination Chamber, very angry indeed, wants to right the wrongs of the past and challenge Goldberg to a match at Fastlane. But I don't know Goldberg wants to get in there with someone like Bobby Lashley is 
I, I don't know. It could be it could be career ending for Goldberg if he manages to get defeated by Bobby Lashley. Like, can you imagine? Goldberg's the man who squashes everyone. He's the man who goes around, hits a spear, hits a jackhammer. One, two, three. But if Bobby Lashley gets in that hurt lock nice and quickly, it could be 30 seconds in and the hurt lock on, and that is it. But he's managed to get the hurt lock on show, managing to get it all the way around, locking it in fully. I didn't think he could, but he's managed to. And Big Show forced to tap out in the middle of the ring. And Lashley tonight picks up another victory on the road to Fastlane where he hopes Goldberg will be waiting for him. But tonight, Lashley, you look, he's still on one knee. That took it out of him. I mean, to lock in that herlock and the amount of, like, the strength he needed to be able to put away Big Show here tonight. <laughs> uh, you cannot deny what Lashley has had to go through here tonight to be able to do this. You can see he is tired. It was a long match. But Lashley put away the big show. And you see he didn't even manage to get the connection. He didn't manage to connect the hands. Didn't manage to get the full log in. That's why it took so long to tap out the big show. But Lashley, he does it anyway. He gets the victory and he is heading to Fastlane. Heading to a clash, hopefully, against Goldberg. Oh, wait a second, backstage. Braun Strowman and the number one contender for the Intercontinental Champion, Adam Cole, having a bit of a discussion backstage. What is Braun Strowman offering here? The two men shaking hands backstage. What, what does this mean? Oh, maybe we'll find out later tonight. I, I don't know. Of course, we're going to see the Intercontinental Champion in our main event here tonight. But very interesting to see Braun Strowman and Adam Cole shaking hands in the backstage area. Not typically something that you would see very often um they're not particularly people you'd expect to be on the same page let's be honest um but right now ronda rousey she wanted a warm-up match and well she's got one here tonight against lana ronda rousey of course the royal rumble winner on a collision course with a smackdown women's champion asuka at wrestlemania and rousey wants another showcase to show what she's gonna do to asuka at WrestleMania or whoever is the SmackDown Women's Champion by the time we get to WrestleMania. And look at this from Ronda Rousey dominating Lana straight away. Hitting two moves and now up she goes. Caught straight away into the Piper's Pit. That's a bad place to be if your name is Lana. And this just shows, showing to Asuka what it's going to be like at WrestleMania. Ronda may have gone too close to the ropes then, but straight away back on the arm of Lana, and Lana's arms are already in pieces. Lana <laughs> screaming in agony as Ronda Rousey planting her, her foot into the elbow of Lana, and now up again a second time. Piper's pit. And this time, wisely getting Lana away from the ropes. And is she going to lock it in again and force Lana to tap out? Is she going to break the arm of Lana here tonight? Down Lana goes. In goes the submission. And she is wrenching that arm of Lana. Wrenching it so tight and breaking the arm. Lana forced to tap out to prevent her arm from being fully broken. But the damage has been done by Ronda Rousey here tonight. Sending the message to the SmackDown Women's Champion Asuka or whoever will be the SmackDown Women's Champion at WrestleMania Ronda sending the message <laughs> what a message it is you're either going to tap out or you're going to get a broken arm and now time for our main event here tonight Kyle O'Reilly taking on Seth Rollins the Intercontinental Champion but very weird to see that Kyle O'Reilly is out here on his own tonight not typically what you'd expect. You expect to see Adam Cole and Bobby Fish by his side, but Adam Cole and Bobby Fish not here tonight to support Kyle O'Reilly. Very strange indeed. Maybe this has something to do with Adam Cole and Braun Strowman. I could be saw Adam Cole and Braun Strowman shaking hands backstage, but I don't understand why. That wouldn't make any sense to me. But, but I don't understand why Cole is now here tonight, but... Maybe he just has all the trust in Kyle O'Reilly to be able to get this done. But 
Kyle O'Reilly taking on the Intercontinental Champion, Seth Rollins. Man's had a hell of a run as the Intercontinental Champion, holding on to it since Hell in a Cell. And of course, we know his number one contender, Adam Cole Bebe, is going to be the next man in line to face for that Intercontinental Championship. It's going to be a hell of a match between those two men. Seth Rollins, Seth freaking Rollins versus Adam Cole Bebe, two of the greatest in-ring competitors of all time. Be a hell of a contest between those two men. But tonight, Seth Rollins has to go up against a different man from the Unspeedia. Has to go against Kyle O'Reilly here tonight. Can Kyle O'Reilly's technical wrestling skills manage to take down the SmackDown savior, Seth Rollins? And straight away, tying up Seth Rollins into a pinfall, a roll-up pinfall there from Kyle O'Reilly. And now locking up what we'd expect from these two men. Very technical start to the match. Kyle O'Reilly holding Seth Rollins into the corner. The referee wants that clean break. But Seth Rollins landing a punch onto Kyle O'Reilly. And an angry O'Reilly trying to get to Rollins. But the referee blocking the way. And now Rollins taking advantage of O'Reilly. Catching him. And now getting the momentum on his side. After riling up Kyle O'Reilly at the beginning of this match. And now down he goes. Thought he was going to take it into a bit of a pinfall there. But instead... Not deciding to go for the pinfall, starting to keep on offense. But O'Reilly rolling out of the way, catching Rollins with a big suplex. Taking him down and Rollins taking a moment to get back to his feet, not expecting it. And now again, another roller from Kyle O'Reilly. One, two. And now Seth Rollins. Seth rolling it through. One, two. Oh, but Kyle O'Reilly just managing to kick out the very last second. And now O'Reilly trying to go down again trying to go for the legs of Seth Rollins but Rollins managing to catch him managing to catch the very clever Kyle O'Reilly it's very interesting he's very obviously very technical base is Kyle O'Reilly he'll want to take you off your base he'll want to work down your limbs want to set you up for a big submission later down the line he wants to work you down Kyle O'Reilly is a man who can be in the ring for a long long time and he's not gonna he's not gonna get worn down He's not going to get too tired. He's not going to, like, run out of air or anything like that. He's a man who can go in there. He can have a 30-minute match. And that's what he would ideally want. He wants to work down your body parts. He wants to wear you down. Till eventually there's nothing more you can do. You're just a broken husk of a man. And that's when Kyle O'Reilly wins. That's when he takes advantage. He wants to be in there for the long run. He doesn't want a short match. He wants a long run old contest that's what Kyle O'Reilly needs and it's now going after the arm like I said that they're, they're going after the joints of Seth Rollins wrenching on the arm of Rollins right there very clever from Kyle O'Reilly looking to go after the arm but if I was Kyle perhaps I'd be looking more at the leg for Seth Rollins a lot of Seth Rollins is often based around his legs and of course that curb stop if he can't if he's got an injured leg he's not going to be able to lay in that curb stop as much as he would otherwise for risk of injuring himself. Now Rollins going for a quick pinfall but only a one count. Not the right timing there from Seth Rollins as he looks to put away Kyle O'Reilly here tonight in our main event. But O'Reilly now taking a down. Seth Rollins then palm strikes to the face and straight away into the submission. Turning it straight into the arm submission. The arm that has been worked down by Kyle O'Reilly throughout this match. And now as much as I said perhaps he should have been working on the leg, he has been doing a great job wearing down that arm of Seth Rollins. Perhaps Rollins is going to be forced to tap out in the middle of this ring. And Falcon's arrow from Seth Rollins to Kyle O'Reilly. And O'Reilly crawling over to the ropes. Going to use the ropes to get himself back to his feet right now. As Rollins just standing there waiting for him to get back up. Catching him straight away. Down he goes. Under the bottom rope. And oh my goodness. Guillotining. Kyle O'Reilly on that bottom rope to Seth Rollins. And now down for the pinfall. Going for the pin again. One. Straight away O'Reilly refusing to give up here tonight. Just getting the one count does Seth Rollins. And now Rollins. No. Catching him. He caught him. And the curb stomp. Is that enough though? Is that enough to put away Kyle O'Reilly? He has no one. Two. And it is. That curb stomp is a deadly move and Seth Rollins managing to put away Kyle O'Reilly had a bit of an issue there with Kyle O'Reilly going after the arm of Seth Rollins looking to force Seth to tap out 
But Seth Rollins managing to catch Kyle O'Reilly with that curve stomp. And that's all he needed here tonight to put away one of the members of the Undisputed Era. Could this be what we see when Seth Rollins and Adam Cole go face to face? Well, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised. Seth Rollins, a former two-time Universal Champion, former, inter well, not former, current Intercontinental Champion, I should say. I apologize. You cannot blame. He is one of the strongest competitors here on SmackDown, but you have to wonder what was going on with that handshake between Adam Cole and Braun. Wait a second, the lights have gone out. Why have the lights gone out? Why are the lights out? Strowman! Strowman behind Rollins! Rollins! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think Strowman wants, wants Seth Rollins. He's tired of Seth Rollins getting involved in his business. And Strowman wants to end this. He wants Rollins. He's made the deal with Cole. Strowman versus Rollins. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.